Welcome back to a roundtable episode of Create Pod. I'm Mike Moody. I'm Grant Davis. And I'm Mariah Gossett. Guys, we're here today at Permanent Record Studios to have another roundtable episode and just like a loose chat. I wanted to talk about monetizing via Patreon. Mm. I know um, I work with a lot of clients here in the studio who ask about monetization. They don't necessarily have an audience that's like 30,000 listeners an episode plus. So um, they're not going to attract a big mattress sponsor. But Patreon is always a... A really good option for making some money on your podcast. I have some experience with it. I know you guys do too. I can really just talk to our experiences with it, um, monetizing for our shows that are about um, between a 3,000, 5,000 an episode range. Um, But Mariah, have you uh, worked with Patreon before in terms of like monetizing a show? So I haven't done a lot of hands-on work. I've worked with a few local artists on their pages. So Nikki Devon, who is a um, an artist and creator I work with, we've been setting up her Patreon and kind of getting her set up. And so it's been really fun coming up with, um, you know, the tiers of support. But there are a few podcasts that I personally listen to that I like supporting as a patron. And then I think they've done a great job of providing um, useful tears and like getting creative with how they work with their audience members. Um, There's a podcast called She's All Fat that I think does an incredible job uh, of, you know, really knowing who their audience is and uh, finding ways to connect with them through like they have like a secret Instagram page that they have just for them where they'll do Q&A sessions. They have um, special Facebook groups for people. They do bonus episodes. They do videos. And so I think they've done a really great job as well as like merchandise and some other things that I think people automatically think of as ways to um, reward your patrons. But I think they've done an interesting job of making it very appealing, especially to younger audiences who maybe don't want stuff but want more access. That's the cool thing about Patreon. It's And for those who don't know what Patreon is, it's patreon.com. It's a platform in which your if you're a podcaster, your listeners or your audience can donate to your podcast and support your content creation efforts. And in turn, you don't necessarily have to offer rewards for that. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people do because it's a nice incentive. And also it's just a nice – it's actually a pretty good content platform, uh, Patreon. You can post exclusive podcast episodes up there exclusive videos, photos. Um, they also have an integration with Discord, which is kind of like a, a, a competitor to Slack. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you can also integrate that and create a community on Patreon. It's a pretty brilliant platform, and those guys have made a lot of money. Oh, yeah. They the do take their cut, they do. for sure. They take their cut, but, it, but it's fine. they've also done like made a great leap in the individual creator being able to keep their project indie and creator self-funded for the most part. Like, right, right. like you're being able to fund through mobilizing your fan base and saying, hey, if you guys are spending your money on other people's content, but you're spending a lot of time listening to the stuff I'm making, you can also pitch in a dollar or two, show your support, and make sure that you're keeping a project that you already have shown you believe in alive. And now you have an investment, an invested interest in it. And I think, like, it really bonds the the creator with the audience in, in a really great way. Yeah. I think there's some interesting stuff, too, happening with stuff like people who maybe have podcasts but also want to, like, branch out and do some more things. So I know, like, uh, Willem Belisai, who is a drag queen from RuPaul's Drag Race, now has – you know, has a multiple podcasts, but has a Patreon page where there's all this exclusive content. So, and I think it's like a dollar, if you pitch in like a dollar for every video that they post, you get like an insane amount of content every month. And it was at a point where I was like, oh, I really like William's stuff. But then I was like, I don't know if I have another $35 a month because this this person puts out so much stuff. <laughs> Very prolific. <laughs> Very prolific. And then uh, like Mono Agapian, who hosts the Drag Her podcast and a couple of other LA-based comedy shows, has uh, a Patreon-only podcast, which I think is another interesting thing uh, for folks to consider if maybe you have a platform that's doing fairly well and maybe you want to figure out a way to monetize like a weird new project that you aren't sure if it's going to get the audience. You can do it through Patreon and this way you're making the money back on whatever you're you're kind of experimenting with. And um, they do a show, I think it's called um, We Love Trash. It's just about trash pop culture that they love. Um, and then Nicole Byer also has, I think, a Patreon-only 90-day fiancé recap 
podcast as well. <laughs> <laughs> there was a uh, several years ago. There was a podcast that was kind of doing what what Grant and I were trying to do uh, a few years ago, and it's kind of evolved where we're doing a network of shows about TV shows, and now we're kind of whittled that down just to a couple shows. Mm-hmm. Um, and what they their incentive to uh, get a listener to donate on Patreon was complete behind the scenes access. So they would post all their notes for their shows, Hmm. including this is a microphone we're going to use. This is how we're going to structure the show. These are the notes I made when watching the television show I'm going to review on the podcast. And they would kind of turn on the cameras and have a conversation about how the show would go before Hmm. um, they would record the show. So you got complete access to that. So being somebody who was a creator myself, a podcaster myself, that was great just to learn from all that stuff. They don't do it anymore. They only did it for a while. And I'm sure it was was just kind of hard to handle. But there are a lot of uh, shows that do that. I think for me, the most valuable thing about Patreon in terms of being a listener, not a content creator, is getting all that behind the scenes access. Oh, yeah. I think the, I mean, the reason people... I think listeners really attach themselves to hosts. It's Mm -hmm. because it is such an like an intimate media. And um, and so I think having that additional layer of access is something that people want, especially if you have the personality for it. I started podcasting in 2007. I feel like Patreon didn't really come around till about 2014 or so. Mm -hmm. But it was like, yeah, the, the, the seven years before that, I just recall how much like if you're doing podcasting it's a passion project and you're pretty much self-funding for the most part like it it was hard to be able to have an easy way for anyone who did like what you're doing to support you sometimes you could put up your like amazon wish list and people would buy you stuff to like help you buy equipment or whatever or you could put up a paypal and Mm -hmm. like people started doing that for a few years before but how quickly and easily it streamlined the process with patreon the fact that you could um, pay in at a particular tier. Like even if even if you want to say like, oh, I want to give $5 an episode, but you could also put a cap on how much you can actually donate that month. So it, it's it's very friendly to the user on your money. I think it's very respectful of it in so much as like a, a lot of times people won't charge you unless they actually put out yeah. um, content that you are going to absorb. So you are only paying for that content. Yeah, I know uh, uh, Starly Klein, who did uh, Mystery Show, which Loved was such it. a such a great show. Um, she's been working on trying to, you know, put a new show together. And so she just put one up that's like, hey, if you're willing to give me $5 a month, it would really help me, you know, get this started. And so, you know, I was happy to, to support her just to see what she put out because I loved Mystery Show. Um, but I'll get notifications because some months she's just like, I haven't had time to actually work on this project. So I'm not going to charge the people who are supporting me on this project. And mm-hmm. I was like, well, that's such a like nice piece of transparency as yeah, a fan to right. be like, oh, I'm literally only paying for the time that you're working on this show, uh, which I think is a really ingenious way to work with people. I also just love so my original uh, degrees in art history. And so the idea that it's called Patreon. And so it's like, oh, we're all little Medici's of our time now. Right. <laughs> we get to support people. Yeah. Makes me laugh. And I think it's it's a fun play on words for that. So good job, Patreon. Good job. I think um, all three of us here run a Star Trek podcast at Star Trek Pod.co. And for me, the um, we do have a Patreon for that. For me, the value there as a content creator has been the community oh, that yeah. we've been able to cultivate on Patreon. Because uh, at a certain tier, uh, one of the, our one of our rewards on the Star Trek Pod is um, the listeners get to join us in a private Slack community, and it's it's just so great to have people not just pay money, but engage on a daily, multiple times a day basis with you on a, it, just a fun platform and share gifts and stuff. But you know that your audience is there. Mm-hmm. You know, you you can all you can almost put a face to the name or put a put a personality uh, to your audience. And it just makes me want to create a good show for them. Yeah. The way in which we've used Patreon and like learned from others where we've seen people have success in in getting an audience and getting people just to sign up and then whether or not people want to level up in their patronage. Uh, it, it's interesting because I remember when I first did it for this other TV podcast, it was, yeah, we have a Patreon back there. 
Um, you guys are always welcome to donate. And I never really thought about like investing beyond like here is a platform for you guys to just go ahead and give us a dollar or two if you want. And I was like, hey, if, if I'm suddenly being able to just at least pay for the hosting costs each month, awesome. But then I was uh, talking to a friend who does a video game show and he was talking about his Patreon and said, all you need to do is offer even the tiniest bit of incentive. Offer something else that they're getting when they give you that money. Because on, on the one hand, yeah, you should be, if you're being a patron, there's this idea that you should give to a project that you believe in because you're already getting that content. You shouldn't be paying for the rewards. But if you offer those rewards, the number of people that will sign up skyrockets. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like suddenly we're like, we're going to do bonus little mini episodes where we just kind of talk like for 15 minutes afterwards on the TV podcast and our, our patronage went up, um, tenfold. Like suddenly people signed up, they had something else that they could look forward to. And the weirdest thing was most of those people who signed up weren't even listening to the the thing behind the paywall. It's that perceived value of something. They just wanted there to be a thing if, Mm -hmm. for them to give the money. Yeah. So that's why whenever we talk to clients here at the studio, I'm always like, if if you have the Patreon, just do something. Have something else of value that people are buying exclusively through Patreon. And it doesn't have to be complicated. Like working with um, Nikki Devon, you know, she is someone who has a tight schedule. She still has to work a day job. She's a very active artist. And so we were trying to come up with rewards that made sense with her schedule. And so one of the things we talked about was just she – gets a ton of social media engagement off of these like kind of rant videos that she makes in her car. It's just like she's had a bad day. She sits down and she's just like, y'all, here's like the BS that I just went through, you know. And um, we were like, those are ingenious. You get a ton of social engagement. And so a reward is like people get additional exclusive rant videos. But it's something that she can do in three minutes in her car. But it's content that her patrons want from her anyway and it's not something that's going to be difficult for her to to finish because i think that's another one especially in the wave of like kickstarters i think people get really creative and out of the box about the things they want to provide for people but if you can't deliver it like you you have to make sure that is something that you can deliver upon and so make it something that's easy like i uh, i have tons of friends who are independent filmmakers and i try to give when i can to their kickstarters but i usually always give to the level where it's like i get a digital copy of whatever their finished product is because i'm like oh i 100 percent know they're gonna have to do this eventually so i'm gonna get whatever this is like i don't need the stickers or the t-shirts or all this extra work just like provide me something you're already gonna have to make I feel like one of the first places we saw the the chat group thing was Modern Rogue, I want to say. Mm-hmm. They they were actually doing it through Discord. Yeah. But you and I already were using Slack on our own for, for chatting about the business here. So when we're kind of looking at like how how smart it was to make a a chat group for your audience that you get an invite to when you do a Patreon level. Once we integrated that into Star Trek, it is one of those things that's so much easier because it also builds upon itself. Like you, oh, yeah. you're, you're creating just a space for all of your fans to continue to engage or your audience. I, I, fans sometimes sounds weird, but your Listeners, audience yeah, to audience. Uh, engage with each other. And now you're moving beyond just doing something for the individual. You're nurturing a community. Right. And once we did that, it becomes something that like self propagates and en- entices more people to to join in. It's something that's that's low energy on mm-hmm. our part. We invite, we engage here and there, but like suddenly, they now have an outlet to talk with other people, and it encourages them to invite other people to join too. So it's it's a really cool idea. Yeah, we started the community, but the community keeps building the community. Yeah, that's really great. What are some other? Have you guys seen some other like outside of the box uh, Patreon uh, incentives or gifts that that really work? I know for me, um, and I mentioned the School of Podcasting before, a podcast that Dave Jackson does that helps podcast creators. And one interesting thing that he does on his Patreon, you can just give two bucks, like not even an episode, like a month. Uh, he engages every month in office hours, so he'll jump on Skype and send you a Skype number and you can, for a couple hours, you can just get on and ask him questions. Hmm. 
So if you have, you know, a problem with some tech gear, he'll try to walk you through it. Uh, if you have some issues about, you know, hey, here's, you know, the here's my rundown for my content next week. Do you have any advice? He'll help you. For and he he does office hours. I think it's about three hours a month, and uh, not a lot of people take advantage of that. I've done it a few times with him, and it's it's always valuable. On my TV podcast, we had a level tier, which was if you give us twenty dollars an episode, you can pick an episode, and we'll do that episode for you. And at first, it was pretty cool. Like pick people, a subject. Yeah, pick a subject. We'll talk about it for an entire episode. You know, like you you've chosen the episode. Um, and it was cool until like suddenly there's just one patron who was like, I want you to talk about this season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and then this one and then this one. I'm like, you're making me watch a show I really don't want to watch. <laughs> <laughs> this is really backfired. <laughs> and I thought it was funny because I was like, I just don't like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> and now I have to talk about it. Yeah, we had uh, Brian Salisbury of Junk Food Cinema on the pod a few weeks ago. Right. And... He's like, yeah, we've kind of stopped because uh, they had a tier like that themselves. Uh, Junk Food Cinema is a show where they talk about like cult and B movies that they like. And a couple of listeners k- just kept suggesting uh, for that pick an episode tier, just really terrible movies. <laughs> so they had to amend that. They're like, pick pick like five or ten movies that we can choose. Yeah. Hopefully there's one that we like in there. I know there, um, there's a, a writer um, – who I like, Baratunde Thurston, who uh, used to, he was um, head of digital content at The Daily Show for a while and now kind of does his own thing. But he set up a Patreon and it has like a newsletter that goes along with it. And I remember he had one of the tiers was just like the Oprah level. And it was something like if you gave like $20,000 a year or something like that. And it was like, I'm assuming if you're doing this, you're probably Oprah. (laughs) And like, (laughs) uh, and you get like, Two full days of in-person interaction a year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. How does that work? Like on the phone? Or I, they, He will go to wherever you are really? and meet with you. Wow. Yeah. But you have to give him $20,000. Of course. Yeah. So. Like, it's like hiring <laughs> or a consultant. More. Yeah, yeah. It was like, it was an insane amount of money. Mm-hmm. But it was like, I just thought it was funny that it was on there. And I was like, I mean, you know. Speak it into the existence, right. I guess, you know, like Why not? put it out there because you, you know. take your shot. Yeah. No, <laughs> <Who> but, <knows? laughs> but uh, our friends over at Modern Rogue also had an insanely high tier of like, give us $5,000. It's like a one time thing, mm-hmm. but you'll help us kickstart. <laughs> These guys spun off their podcast into making a, uh, they bought seven acres of land and they're building kind of like a compound at this <laughs> point. <laughs> it right. feels like it's a compound. Yeah. Um, but they're like, help us kind of kickstart the um, construction of this. We'll have like updates. And then if you give that amount of money, it was like, maybe it was like 10000 I don't know what it was. But it's like, you can come stay here for a week at our place hmm. uh, once we kind of have it up and running. So they're kind of building like a like an Airbnb kind of thing. Hmm. Um, a retreat center? Yeah. <laughs> Or a cult compound, you know. which is much more what it seems like. I mean, cult compounds <laughs> are really in right now, so it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah, there's like 10 documentaries on Netflix about cults. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> I just – this is like – you can cut this or whatever. But uh, there's a Viceland show uh-huh. about this guy who is building this like sustainable – air quote – sustainable compound down in Panama. And he charges people – like $5,000 to come intern there to learn how to like build sustainable huts and like uh-huh. how to install like composting toilets and all this stuff. And I was just like, one, this is like a culty pyramid scheme. This is like everything we're obsessed with right now. It was so good. <laughs> I think it's called Jungle Town is the name of the series. But it's Smart evil people. Yes. <laughs> that, sounds, yeah. that sounds a little creepy. <laughs> a little creepy. Yeah. Um, so... I know there are some Patreon alternatives. There's uh, a new one called Glow. Has anybody looked at that? I have not checked that out yet. Glow is kind of like Patreon, but it is a It's not the ladies who wrestle show? It's, it's not, <laughs> which is one of my favorite shows. Um, but no, it's it's a Patreon, but it's only for podcasters. We should oh. say on Patreon, you can be any type of creator mm-hmm. and uh, have your audience support you that way. I haven't looked too deeply into that, so maybe we'll... we'll do a follow-up ep. Do a follow-up ep on that. Um Anything else you guys want to say about monetizing a show on Patreon? Um, and, and maybe this might be an interesting subject for another show, but I find that a lot of the shows I currently work on make most of their money doing live shows. 
Okay, like uh, going to a venue space and mm-hmm. doing something live with an audience. Yeah, there. where you can sell merch, you can sell tickets, you can maybe get a cut of the bar. You know, there's mm. if it's something that fits your format, I think it's a really interesting way to one engage with the audience that you have, um, and then two to monetize the content that you're creating in, in a in a almost more traditional way than sitting around a microphone. Obviously, you have to be people who are comfortable being in front of an audience because if it's not a good show, that's not really a great way to make money but um if you are the person like a personality who thrives on uh live audiences it's a very interesting way to make uh money and i've seen folks like call your girlfriend does tours now pod save america did a big tour um a lot of podcast creators are now doing these kind of countrywide tours of their show because it's a way to engage with fans and also a way to uh make some money so. we, we did that episode with Corey coleman in the first season where he was talking about how they do touring right. and live shows and it yeah. works out well for them. Double toasted. Yeah, they've been all over the country now. Yeah. Uh, for my part, I would recommend that if you are thinking about doing Patreon, I wouldn't do it right at the start. You want to take a little bit of time, show what your product is, your podcast, and allow people to engage with you. Kind of get a, a measure of if you have that engagement, if you have fans through other social media before you kind of launch it, um, then then it won't be kind of a, a slow trickle. You'll at least be able to get a little bit of an initial bump of patrons up front before, so, so that you have a little bit of a, an idea of how much of an audience you're able to kind of reach. And, and what were you saying? You were saying before, like, generally the percentage of your audience that will also financially donate. It really depends on the subject matter and like how how engaged they are, but it's usually just going to be like in the like less than ten percent. Like oh yeah, generally it's between like one and if you're lucky five percent. Right. Really yeah. small. Yeah. I think the only exception I'd say to that rule is if maybe you're someone who already has an audience or is an artist if and you're maybe established, sure. yeah, then it might be worth yeah. it to launch it in conjunction with the content. Yeah, I think um, I think it was Radio Lab recently that was very transparent about this. I'm not sure if they're on Patreon, but they do have some kind of donation model in which the listeners can donate and. They get, you know, hundreds of thousands of listeners. And through this donation model, they were very transparent recently and said, yeah, we get 1% of our listeners who donate. And that's a huge show and a lot of people are passionate about it. So that's something to keep in mind. But I also think like being the bigger guy, you're like, oh, other people are probably taking care of that. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. But whereas these smaller ones, their, their whole existence might depend at a certain point on you donating. So mm-hmm. I'd also recommend to anyone listening to this that mm. you consider using one of these platforms to support a podcast that you love. Support other people that are, that are making content that you would be sad if it goes away. Yeah. And if you are a content creator, definitely let your listeners know, hey, you're helping me continue to make this content for you if you support the podcast through donating to Patreon or wherever else we can donate. You're you're an active producer of Almost of this show. Yeah. Advocate for yourself. Mm-hmm. It, sometimes it feels like you're selling out, but do it. I mean, no. you're you're making something that you're passionate about. Show that passion and like, hey, it, buy this product. Yeah. It's, it's not the it's not the most shameless thing you could do. There's a, a really fun like RuPaul quote that's like, if they ain't paying your bills, pay them no mind. So it's like, mm, you know, yeah. you want right. to yeah. you want to like you want to get that love and support and you want to continue to have that circle of if you're supporting me, I'm going to support you and create the stuff that you want to hear. That's great. Uh, so just to wrap this up, let's do our thing. What are you guys listening to right now? you have any recommendations? Oh, I just finished the Catch and Kill uh, podcast series from Ronan Farrow. Heard good things. Oh, so good. I'm really sad it's only nine episodes, but it is a very solid nine episode run. Uh, I've been really enjoying it. Um, I also have to look at my phone because it all blends in my brain. Well, that's a good, good recommendation. Grant, what are you listening to? Um, I'm actually listening to an audio book instead of podcast mm-hmm. right now. Oh, what's the audio book? Uh, Tasting Beer. It's by Randy Mosher. It is I, – I, on my beer podcast, we've been doing blind tastings where we actually wear a blindfold and we're trying to uh, guess what we think like the alcohol is in the beer, um, what level it is, mm-hmm. what type of beer it is, what the flavor notes, all that. Um, and it's so kind of 
um, telling about like how much you make assumptions based on what you can see. If you know the brand, you already know the style. If you know the color of the beer, you can like really just kind of rattle off a lot of these, or at least I can now that I've been doing this for a few years. But trying to do it blindfold, suddenly it's like, oh, do I do I know exactly? Like I, I can get tastes, but it's hard for me to narrow down on what particular styles are. So um, Rubio, who was also on another episode of Create Pod, uh, he got me this book and said, listen to this. It's going to help you with kind of figuring out those style designations. And it's pretty cool. Awesome. I've been listening to Culturally Relevant with Dave Chen. I don't know if you guys know Dave Chen. He uh, is one of the hosts of the Slash Filmcast. He's also um, did a few shows with my friend Joanna Robinson. And his new show, um, it's basically a chat show where he, he brings on really interesting uh, authors and people, creative people. But I got into the show not only because I do I like Dave Chen, but he recently did an episode with Nick Kwa, who runs Hot Pod, the mm-hmm. Hot Pod newsletter, which is basically the uh, the go-to newsletter of, for, the, industry, of yeah. the podcast industry. And they had a really great granular deep talk on where the podcast industry is going um, in, in not just in terms of people creating podcasts, but how they're going to be consumed and uh, what the advertising market looks like. And it was really great. So I recommend that. It's Culturally Relevant with Dave Chin. Hmm. I have one more I have to plug. It's called Moonface. It is a audio um, like dramedy. Um, I don't normally love uh, nonfiction podcasts, but it's – well. It's based on his life stories, but it is with voice actors and the sound design is incredible. Um, The main character is played by uh, Joel Kim Booster, which if anyone's into comedy, he's been a comedy writer for a long time and um, was on that NBC show um, that got moved to like their streaming platform. Friends. (laughs) Friends. I remember that one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Frasier. (laughs) Anyway, it's about like a community of uh, immigrants that live in like Queens. Anyway, uh, Joel Kim Booster, very funny actor. So he plays the main character. It's called Moonface. And it's about um, sort of the sound artist trying to figure out how to grow up. So he's like, I'm done with college. I'm still living at home. I'm working like a crappy job. Um, And he has not come out to his mom yet formally. And so it's kind of, and his mom speaks Korean and he does not speak Korean. And so anyway, it's very, very good. The sound design is excellent. It's uh, Moonface, and the creator's name is uh, James Kim. Cool. Well, thanks for listening to this roundtable episode of Create Pod. You can subscribe to the pod at createpod.co. Follow us on social media at CreatePod. Um, hit, hit us up on Patreon. No, I, 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 I don't think we actually have it. We don't have a Patreon for Create Pod. If you like Star Trek, you can hit us up at uh, uh, StarTrekPod.co and find our Patreon there. Oh, there or a Star Trek show. Why not? Um, all right. You can find me at Mike Moody on Twitter, guys. Where can people find you? At Baron Von Grant. And I'm at Mariah Gossett. And this is recorded at Permanent Record Studios in Austin, Texas. Find us online, permanentrcrd.com. Bye. We love you. We love you. Bye.